It's another week and another amazing episode here on the Granny Panty Podcast. I'm your host, Ruby Lynn. I am so excited that you decided to join us this week and hear what our amazing guest has to say. If you'd like to follow me, you can find all things Ruby at Ruby Lynn, R-U-B-Y-L-Y-N-N-E dot com. And if you'd like to follow this podcast, you can go to the Granny Panty Podcast dot com where you'll see all the recent episodes, past episodes, and soon to have my blog. This week's guest is an iconic legend in porn. I was really excited to get to sit down and chat with her. And her amazing sense of humor just blew me away. I love how she can make lemonade out of lemons on any situation. She's been in this industry for well over almost 30 years. So help me welcome the amazing and beautiful Julia. Julia Ann, I am so excited to have you on the show this week. Thank you so much for making the time to be here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I have watched your work for quite some time. I think even going back to the 90s, you were one of the iconic legends in porn. So (laughs) I'm excited to kind of hear your story and find out what you have going on. Okay. Current day. All right. I mean, it's... um... I don't know that there's a lot, <laughs> but we're going to go for it. <laughs> I love it. Well, what I enjoy about talking to folks who've been in the industry a really long time is kind of talking about how it's evolved. Yeah. So, you know, when you started, it looks like you did your first uh, mainstream porn production in 92. Is that sound no. about right? And so everything back then was studio. Everything back there was studios. There wasn't as, I don't recall there being as much of the mom and pops. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's evolved to present day with, you know, majority being self-produced, only fans, models, and performers yeah. have control, a lot more control over their content. How has that evolved for you through the years? Yeah. Let's talk about that. I mean, I've taken like the same ride, I guess. Um, you know, it started out with just uh, features and doing mm-hmm. bigger movies. And there were, you know, contracts where I was contracted to, to specific companies. And so mm-hmm. I, I would just work for them only. And that was really all feature work, all mm-hmm. movies, not not gonzo, not just sex scenes, not but actual like the whole script scenario (laughs) and then even back then i mean i started the when the internet came along i started a website before that obviously we were in fan mail right so it was just like everything was through the mail so you got a mailbox and people could send you letters and maybe you put together a fan club and i had these little metal these cards these membership (laughs) cards put together but they were like kind of metal they were uh not metal, like a credit card right okay so and everybody had a membership card whether it was like you know silver bronze you know platinum whatever it was and from there we go to the internet right and then mm-hmm. from the internet we develop our own websites and such so then you have that and uh so that kind of made it a little bit more personal and a little Mm -hmm. quicker, you know, to get to contact each other to answer questions, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So from there, obviously, now we're in a full fledged, everybody has almost instant, it's like, uh, it's convenience store porn, right? Like, (laughs) it's like, even the when you had a website, it's like you had your own like little grocery store, but now it's just like convenience stores. So yeah, it's it's uh, everything's very fast. Everything's mm-hmm. easy for people to access you at any given time. I mean, obviously, there's pros and cons to that. But yeah, so I kind of gone through the the uh, a gamut of things. Um, I just came in on the tail end of beta, so I I, I got to VHS. If I would just been a few years before that, I might have I might have had some beta under me, but I don't have any beta tapes. So. <laughs> 
I part of me is like, oh, I, I didn't have beta. Like, <laughs> like, oh, I went straight to VHS. All right. That's right. That's right. Uh, and then DVDs were the big thing. Then DVDs. Yeah. And do you like having your fans have quicker access to you now? Or did you like it when they had to kind of go through some hoops to maybe be able to contact you? It depends on the person, right? Yeah. You've got some, some people that engage with you and they're just real um, fun and light and they become almost like, you know, just like an extension of your friends. Mm Mm-hmm. That you know in person. Yes. And then you have other people that are just either borderline or full on like yeah. abusive. So it's hard to say because I mean, when you're just chit chatting, what feels like mm-hmm. becomes old friends, then yeah, it's great. You can get a hold of your friends anytime. But <laughs> but when they're aggressive or abusive or to me demanding yeah, still falls into the say. aggressive abusive, right? So mm-hmm. people are like, well, I might be a little needy. No, no, no. You're aggressive or an abusive. So, <laughs> so yeah. when you're demanding <laughs> my attention at your whim, you, you there's some problems. Like that's not fun. And then also you just have a lot of people who maybe not don't even like you per se, but they just needed a target that day. Right. 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 So you have those people who just basically come on the internet in order to try to spread cruelty. So that, that I, don't, I don't appreciate all that. That's not fun. And I've seen a lot more of that lately. And I don't know if it's correlated. The social worker in me is like, is it correlated to the economy? You know, and when we're unhappy, then we're trying to take it out on others that we see maybe as more successful. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, clearly, I I think unhappy people do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do I think it's tied to that? I don't know. Like, I look at where do I see the stuff that has the most unnecessary language, just Mm -hmm. unnecessary. And I find that I have, there's more unnecessary things being said to me as the platforms are more PG. The more unnecessary things are just said. And I, I find that, you know, even on Twitter platforms, it seemed to have been a little bit more lax in what they've let us do. Right. I don't feel that the hate or the unnecessary, not even just the hate, but the unnecessary comments Mm -hmm. aren't as common. I don't have just people going randomly, man, you're just a whore. Like that's, I don't really, that doesn't really happen to me on Twitter, but a random person who doesn't even follow me that I don't even engage with on, let's say Instagram. Mm -hmm will say some weird stuff like and i'm just it's very strange to me uh that the more pg the more right unnecessary things are are said that's an interesting observation but you're right i have four instagram accounts and i can't even with that sometimes Well, yeah, like I don't really see it. I, I feel like the people that are on these things are just, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know if it has to do with being sexually or psychologically not as okay with yourself or something. Yeah, okay with be. sexuality. And so you see me and then things become unnecessary. Right, right, right. It's, just, it, it's I don't know you. That's right. <laughs> You don't know me at all, you know. It's like, right, right. No, but on truth. Twitter, I feel like everybody's like, "Hey, <laughs> I like that picture of your." Mm. You're like, okay. Well, and social media is just such a cesspool anyway to begin with. It's the necessary evil to it's drive business. But are you still shooting for studios, or is everything you're doing self-produced? No, I, I pretty much only do my own stuff. Um, 
unless once in a while somebody will talk me into doing like a non-sex role in a movie, but just because it's funny. Mm-hmm. Usually that's Quasar, uh, who's a director in our business. He usually says, I want you to do this non-sex role for me and because I want to throw hot dogs at you. I'm like, you're rude. <laughs> You know, but it is. It's he wants to do something mean to me, and it's <laughs> it's become like a joke now, right? Like he's just oh gonna have me on there so he can do some sort of horrible thing to me. <laughs> and what was the last you know scene that you had with him? Was it throwing hot dogs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a lot of animals. <laughs> So okay, where were we? Hot dogs. Did you really get hot dogs thrown at you? Yeah, he had he had Ryan Driller, another performer, throw a plate of hot dogs in my face. He's a horrible person. Um, before I don't that, know if it pays was- good though, right? That somebody can throw wieners at me all day if they want. I mean, I don't know. I usually like just tell him to take it out in trade, and then he can shoot something for me later. So it, it's actually just kind of a it's. It's become more of a just a joke. I love that, though. Yeah. Playfulness. Yeah, we've even put that on Twitter. Like, who wants to see him do something mean to me? Like, what is it? And so, yeah, no, I've been shot with a with a syringe full of fake manhood. Yeah. <laughs> fake manhood. <laughs> I don't know what I'm allowed to call it on here. Manhood. So we all knew what I was talking about. I love so, your yeah. sense of humor. A whole syringe of this in my face as I was screaming. Ah! So he has cuckolded me. He has like he just looks to yeah. do things to me. I don't know. That's I. That's kind of fun though that you have yeah, that kind I, of relationship I put it out there. I said we should have a contest where you know people can write in and somebody's things get picked. You know, as what right going to do to me this week. <laughs> like a poll. Here's, yeah. here's the five options. What should we subject her to? <laughs> Jerk. So tell me, that brings me around. Tell me about a time that you had a scene or something that didn't go as planned. And what happened and what did you learn from it? Oh, and you know, see, it's funny because I bet you everybody's like, oh, this thing happened. But I've had two. I've had, so I've had, well, I've had many. But Two come to mind, one good, one not bad, but unfortunate. So one was my own doing, but I was enjoying, it was actually Mike was shooting it, Quasar was shooting it, and I was like having a great old time with a performer named Tony Rebus. And it was just a regular boy-girl scene. It was nothing crazy. And basically he got all, you know, the footage he needed. And I was like, hey, does anybody (laughs) want to do anal he was like what i'm not paying you for that i was like no i just thought i I, i'm kind of in i'm interested in doing this with tony and tony was so flattered (laughs) because of course i mean it was like you're gonna do that for free so uh yeah i just randomly offered up parts of my body (laughs) did you get it on film at least to sell it later i did but i was having such a good time and he was like okay um so there was that the other one was i was shooting for kink they'd use duct tape to tape me to a chair it's fine all the things i agreed to they had put it on my chest to the chair and i think i started to have a a bit of a panic attack because I couldn't expand my chest really to right and once my brain got a hold of that notion i started to get woozy and so they went to cut me out and something happened and the guy accidentally cut the back of my heel and nicked my Achilles tendon. Oh, my word. And it was gnarly. Like, you know, at first, you know, the, the me just goes, uh, it glosses over all things. I gloss over all things. So... I looked down and I'm like, is it bad? And he was like, no, it's not bad. I could tell he was panicking. And then once they got my upper body unlocked, I, I went to the floor with my hands and I looked down between my legs because my hands were on the floor between my feet, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like over in a chair. And I looked <clears> over <throat> and I was like, and I could see how the skin was buckling because it was, you know, 
it was cut. So I could see where it had buckled because it had nothing. It wasn't holding itself together anymore. And I just went, oh, no, that is bad. And I wasn't totally lucid, right? Like I was, I remember saying it, but I was like, oh, sad. Oh, my and word. And then they got me out of the chair. And once I laid back and I regained, like, my my ability to think clearly, I sat back up and I went, okay, so I need band-aids or some, I need a first aid kit because I need butterflies, the mm-hmm. butterfly band-aids, right? So the guy comes <clears> in <throat> so nervous and upset now that he did this, that he grabs the first aid kit and it, he goes to open it and things go poof out of it because of course oh my he's, gosh. he's just a mess. And, and I'm like, okay, sir. You need to go sit down. We're going to be all right. So just give me that. Okay. I'm good in the face of tragedy. So I got the butterflies. I sealed it. I took another thing. I put it over it. And then I, I put an East bandage around it. I go, okay, let's shoot this so I can go to the hospital. Oh, my and God. They were like, what? And I was like, because. That's how my brain functions. My brain functions is like we got a schedule. So clearly there's a little (laughs) bit of a glitch happening, but we'll postpone that to the end. So they were like, no, we got to take you to the hospital. I was like, no, we need to shoot this and then I can go to the hospital. And they're like, no. So wow, yeah. So um, they took me to the hospital. You know, they sutured it and everything. I actually stayed the night at Kink. Uh, I woke up in the morning, and I went to stand up because I had to go to use the restroom. Oh. The second I went to stand up, everything that could possibly go into this area to make it hurt did. Oh my and goodness. I was like, I almost <laughs> passed out from the pain. I couldn't. What has happened to my, my ankle? Yeah. What has happened? I was so tragic. And I, they had, I had to take a wheelchair to the Edmund airport. They had to, I had to use a, I had to use a crutch. <clears throat> I had to like, I, it was, a, it was a mess. <laughs> It was a mess. They were like, this is no joke. Like, he could have severed your Achilles. Like, your Achilles was – your tendon sheath was probably nicked. Like, you're going to hurt. Yeah. Um, When you said that, I was like, oh, my word. Just trying to walk is going to be a challenge. It was crazy. I never, I, it was because I mean, the incision's like it was like that big, right? It mm-hmm. just because it was like almost like it, it just took right, it right, right. Um, and there were safety shears, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was just I don't, I don't know. Anyhow, doesn't matter. What matters is is that man did it hurt, and they had to come get me in the morning so I could use the restroom. Because I knew that I was afraid they the uh, kink was at an armory, mm-hmm. big okay. giant a place that used to be an armory, and they had their bathrooms were like old latrines, and so you had all that white tile that's all small, like everywhere, mm-hmm. and everything mm-hmm. like tile, porcelain, or stainless. Right, this is it. This is where you're at. And I was like, if I fall in there, I'm done i'm I'm not getting back up so i was like yeah i'll just wait for someone to come get me because i knew i i was hurt and i couldn't believe it because i was like it didn't hurt this bad yesterday when it oh. but i woke up and I was, <clears throat> it, I was okay till i put my foot down off the bed and yeah. would stand up on it and everything every bit of pain in the world pain. right there oh. and i almost passed out from that pain i was like holy crap it's incredible amount of pain. But of all the companies to have that happen with, I will say they were like, all right, so human resources. Duh, 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 duh. I'm like, wait, wait. This is it human resources? Like <laughs> workers yeah. comp, workers yeah. comp. There's a human resources here. Like I even Quasar was like, yeah, I could offer to have Pat by drive you to the hospital. That's about where we're at. <laughs> like, you know, but Kink is like, we have human resources. What do you need? I was like, what? So, anyway, that's, yeah, that's I didn't definitely, 
a scene gone wrong story. <laughs> it really did go wrong. It was very that it, early on too. I mean, I didn't even get to really shoot anything. Second, yeah. they went to undo the tape. I got I got clobbered. Yeah, that was brutal. Um, so I oddly I missed other than that scene, which we did once I healed. Mm-hmm. I missed zero work. Wow. I have no idea how fortunate I became, but everything for some reason, the universe knew something tragic was going to happen to me. I, all the work I had planned, I could not, I could hide my ankle. It didn't oh, matter. Perfect. I did this Cougar Life commercial. <laughs> I walked barefoot. I did, um, I did a webcam thing and these all these and little scenes for cherry pimps. Didn't care. Hide my ankle. Like it was very bizarre that all the things that I had going on yeah. were all things that I could navigate this giant thing on my ankle. Wow. Wow. And did you have do you have any residual issues with it? No, I mean I have a scar, but that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Wow. So what a story. It. That's a crazy story. <laughs> so tell us about what you have going on now. Any big projects you're working on? Anything huge coming out this year? No. I did. I did a, uh, I did a non-sex role for, for uh, the director, Ricky Greenwood, in a movie called Feed Me. Uh, at least that was the running title mm-hmm. uh, for adult time. It's not huge, but it was, it was fun to do. So okay, I got to, you know, hang out with people that I don't see anymore. So that's always right. Nice. Right. Um, it's another great reason to do it, especially because myself, I've been helping family um, with health matters lately. So mm-hmm. to, something to get me out and, and be able to laugh with people that I've known forever and that I don't see anymore and spend a day outside this, this bubble is mm-hmm. amazing sometimes. And uh, other than that, I mean, it's just me and doing my OnlyFans and working with my, you know, taking care of my zoo. I have a little zoo. That's cool. Yeah, being a caretaker is exhausting, not only physically, but mentally. So it's good that you have these things that kind of take you out of that and give yeah, you a and break. And it's weird because I don't really <laughs> feel like I really doing much right you know i was really just kind of going in the morning <laughs> if i got my groceries i might add a few things in there that i thought mm-hmm. they'd like maybe once in a while cook something make break make them break him breakfast but then again he was just like oatmeal and then want some coffee and then once a week try to put together like a little game night so we can do dominoes mm-hmm. over the hospital mm-hmm. bed or something like it doesn't feel like I'm working hard at all. And yet mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like someone ran me over with a tractor and I don't understand how that works. Like, cause I mean, I can honestly look at what I'm doing and I'm like, I'm not digging ditches for a living. Right. Like I, I'm <clears throat> getting up, I'm going driving three miles maybe and making putting coffee that's already made in the microwave right you know draining the catheter bag like all the little Mm -hmm. things have a a hot towel wipe or whatever and then for some reason it's just like all of a sudden you i just tank and i'm like is Mm -hmm. it waiting to this? like i don't know if actually has anything to do with it or not but it's, but it's it's normal. That's very normal. It doesn't feel rational to me because I could work hard every day, every day, every every day. And yeah, I'll get tired because yeah, I'm like, dude, I gotta sleep because I beat myself up outside for like digging holes. Like I don't know, gardening. I've been on set, you know, twelve hours, fourteen hours. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. had twenty two hour days. You know, I, I can work. Like that's not a thing. But there's something about it that I feel. Mm-hmm strips you and I yes. it's very bizarre yep it's it's a mental you know I think even though you say I feel like I'm not doing that much it feels you know like an easy task but also you've got that living in your mind you're worrying you know worrying about this person also trying to keep your own schedule so what you're explaining is very normal 
very normal. It's just so strange, though, because I just look at it and I go, Julia, pull up your big girl panties. Like, come on. You're not you're not hanging from a telephone pole. That is a very normal response. To- Physiological response. Yeah. And that's strange. Do you have a shooting schedule? I mean, what is your what is your schedule for producing content look like, Julianne? So I am one of those people, I'm an all or nothing. Mm-hmm. So I will <laughs> all or nothing. So I will get a bug up my butt and I'm like, oh, I'm going to schedule stuff. And then I get a hold of everybody. I'm like, who wants to shoot? And then they're like me. And I'm like, we all pick dates. And then for like three months, I will like shoot usually not more than once a week because I fit myself into Quasar's schedule, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, when I shoot with somebody, we shoot a lot. Uh, that day and so you know i'll I'll stagger that for like a a few months and then all of a Mm -hmm. sudden i'm like i can't i can't shoot no more (laughs) i'm tired and then i don't shoot for a while Mm -hmm. Um, or i just do little things around here or i will shoot customs i'll do like solos i'll do but as far as shooting with other people i'm usually Mm -hmm. i i pack it all into a certain amount of time and then i usually kind of withdraw a little bit mm-hmm. for a while mm-hmm. and then it'll happen again. Okay. And are you shooting boy, girl? Nope. Just girl, girl. I haven't been shooting with men. You know, it, it's funny. I did an interview not long ago and <laughs> really the whole reason I stopped shooting with men is I just didn't like the way my body looked in a boy, girl okay. scene. And I, in a girl, girl scene, I feel like I have more control over my body my angles okay whatever it is and it's not necessarily as aggressive Mm -hmm. but with the guys men for me are easier to work with Mm -hmm. because they do a lot of the work like they they do most of the movement as far as the thrusting and they're Mm -hmm. going this way and they're turning you that way and they're flipping you this way and kind of just it's like a dance and and right lead and you just you can just follow but when you're with another woman i find that you don't know necessarily who's going to lead and even if you say you're really not sure and then (laughs) so i i do find shooting with men much more simple much more straightforward but because they are the lead your body follows and i couldn't i found myself kind of turning my side i was like oh i don't know do i have a wrinkle on this side oh i don't know should i mm-hmm. turn this way oh i don't know and so i found myself pivoting and then i was no longer dancing with them i was fighting with them gotcha and yeah, it was it was becoming this push pull, and even though they may not say anything and I may not say anything, I I recognized it wasn't fluid. I recognized that there was a struggle, and I didn't want to become a bad performer. So I was like, you yeah. know, I think my work here is done because I <laughs> find myself fighting the dance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I don't like it um, where I'm not fighting with women. Okay. In the scene. Like that I'm not fighting this, the positions and I'm not over critical of where my side's at. Cause I know that I can, they're not going to turn me away that they need me to be in order to do the thing that they right. the camera. They're not going to do that. And that's and So I decided to just shoot with women and now I adore women historically you know when you're when it's work you have a lot of women who aren't interested in women and it becomes more difficult to work with people who are not really interested yes in working with someone due to gender so gotcha yeah there's pros and cons right yeah I just, yeah for sure yeah, it's pros and cons so I just decided that if I were to shoot any, I, I'm not saying I'll never shoot with a guy. I, I may someday and it'll be for me. I've, I've spoken to people like Lucas Frost and, and Isaiah Maxwell. And mm-hmm. I just haven't, I just haven't. Yeah. Well, that, and it's good that you were able to uh, analyze that for yourself and figure out why, why is this not feeling good or, you know, not making I me happy. 
when your head's not in the game, a scene's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very difficult to portray any sort of intimacy with somebody when all you can think about is how uncomfortable you are, whether it's psychologically, physically, emotionally, whatever it is. You can't. Yeah. Like I, the whole time I was so concerned and insecure that it was becoming a struggle. Mm-hmm. I was just, I don't talking. want to, I don't want the guys to be like, girl, I don't want to work with you no more. You're not fun anymore. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, I was just talking to uh, another, you know, nineties iconic porn legend. And one of the things she said <clears throat> that she's found the through the evolution is that back when it was mostly studio porn there was a level of flirtation and like this build up and just she felt like the scenes were better versus now she feels like it's all just a job you know like we're just going to show up at this airbnb or this place and just bang out this scene literally and then everybody's like all right see ya and so i think I kind of I kind of likened it to that a little bit when I heard you say it too is maybe maybe that being comfortable with your scene partner and yeah just they know you get to know you and get to know your angles or what you want yeah communication like the way I was viewing my body I was like there's no angle like there wasn't yeah. anything I could tell them yeah that cuz it was me it yeah. was 100% me. It mm-hmm. had nothing to do with them at all. Yeah. So yeah. there was no way they could have put me where I would have felt okay. Gotcha. There was no way they could have done something that I would have been like, yeah, I look good. Like, no, nah. I was like, no, I know that's shaky. Like, and I'm not yeah. happy. So. Yeah, we know ourselves the best. And I hate the gym. I I do. So do I. So if anybody wants to say to me, well, you should have just gone to the gym. Uh, No. Yeah. I I hate the gym too. I can't even tell you at least three or four times a week I go to bed and I'm like, I'm going to get up and go to the gym. And then my alarm goes off and I'm like, nah, I'll go tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just, no, just no. As we close out, tell me if you could go back and tell your 20-year-old self any piece of advice based on what you know today, what would you tell yourself? Oh, my gosh. Don't date Pete. <laughs> Don't marry Brian. Uh, that Kate, that ended up having some good things, but for the most part. Um don't date Pete and continue to at least contribute a hundred dollars a month to a SEP IRA without fail. Yes. That's a theme this week. That is definitely a theme for my guests this week because yesterday's guest was like, I would have told myself to save my money a little better. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I have a SEP, but it's nowhere where it could have been. Yeah. On minimal effort. Minimal effort. A hundred bucks a month, minimal effort. I, yeah. And there was times that I put money in and then I took money out. I was just like, oh, what a dumbass. Yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> but the worst part is, is that what hindsight do you really need? Everybody tells you everybody it's not even you'd be like oh if i'd only known no girl you kind of knew you knew told you (laughs) it's everywhere (laughs) everybody said oh Oh, my god that's a good one well awesome so tell everyone where they can find you oh okay yeah um well i'm on the social medias so you've got uh, the real Julia Ann is usually it. The real okay. Julia Ann. However, Instagram, it's the real Julia Ann live. Okay. Uh, someone hacked my account one time and I actually couldn't get the real Julia Ann back up. But I, I had to put live on the end. Mm. I just opened a TikTok. 
which nice I, which i think is the real julianne i'd have to look but in any case i have a you'll know it's me because i have a video pinned on it that says this is it it is this and i actually say it in the video so if you're anywhere else it's not me yeah don't don't be had uh chances are i'm never going to ask y'all for money i'm never going to have anybody slide into your dms and be like i'm her hidden assistant (laughs) no no there is no super super duper secret vip account okay Um, so that's not going to happen. It's not, no. Uh, so I do have the OnlyFans, which is the real Julia Ann. I do have a loyal fans, which is Julia Ann. Okay. I have a fansly. We're kind of just working with it. I have Sex Panther. Nice. So I try to. Yeah. Sp- Spread it around the best I can. Awesome. And that's about that. So. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. And I wish you luck with your caretaking of your family member. And thank you. Take care of yourself. Plan some self-care. I would like to say I plan on it. But, you know, actually, I've just been pulling weeds. I kid you not. I go outside. I sit in the. I sit. I don't. It's not a strenuous situation. (laughs) Sit down in the dirt and I just pull the weeds around me. And that's how I hold it together. It's very therapeutic. Minimal effort, maximum return. I love it. (laughs) I love it. Well, I look forward, as I'm sure everyone else does, to all your awesome content that you put out. And Thank thank you again. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too.